Imagine this, in the heart of the bustling city of Optima, within the sleek glass walls of Universal Global, thrives a sales team, unlike any other. Every morning, bright smiles light up the office and the air is charged with an energy so powerful you can feel it and almost see it sparkling around. This team is led by the charismatic and visionary Mia. And Mia has crafted a unique environment where each team member's individualized needs and motivations are not just recognized, but celebrated. Under Mia's guidance, the team operates on a foundation of deep trust and mutual respect with every member driven by shared commitment to exceed their goal. And on a typical Monday morning, the team gathers in the conference rooms. The walls are adorned with motivational quotes and the team's commendations. Mia starts the meeting with a warm thank you for the team's great performance and singles out one of the team members, Audrey, for the huge improvement she has made. Her voice, always encouraging, fills the room with confidence. And in this utopian team, Mia knows her members, by not just their sales stats, but their dreams, their strengths, and even their favorite weekend activities. She's used DISC not as a mere managerial tool, but as a bridge to deeper understanding and connection. Tom, the team's dominator, thrives on direct challenges, is often given tasks that require bold, decisive actions. While Ellie, the inspirer, excels in environments where she can persuade and motivate others, often leading client presentations with her infectious enthusiasm. Mia's leadership mantra is simple yet revolutionary. Lead with empathy and accountability will follow. Each team member is held accountable, but not out of fear, but out of desire to not let their team or Mia down. This sense of accountability is not imposed, but is woven into the very fabric of their team culture. It's a system where constructive feedback flows freely, not as criticism, but as a catalyst for personal and professional growth. Under Mia's guidance, Universal Global Sales Teams has not only consistently surpassed their ambitious sales targets, but has also achieved a level of job satisfaction that has become the envy of the industry. This utopian sales culture driven by Mia's exceptional leadership has not just led to record-breaking sales figures, but it's also nurtured a cohesive team that would do whatever it takes to excel in their roles. Is that not the dream of most every sales leader? Welcome to the transformative triangle of change. Join the journey as we explore a critical yet often overlooked aspect of sales leadership. Surprisingly, understanding and addressing the emotional needs of your team members. As sales managers, your role extends beyond hitting revenue targets and monitoring performance metrics. It's about diving deeper into the motivational and emotional landscapes that drive each member of your team. Their success comes from your leadership. Their success comes from your leadership tapping into their motivational dynamics. It's what's happening between their ears. It's what they're thinking. It's what they're feeling. That's it's what's driving success in a team. And imagine tapping into each person's unique motivations and emotional drivers. This isn't just about creating a positive workplace. It's about unlocking a powerful source of motivation and engagement that propels your entire team toward unparalleled success. And from the information I'm going to share with you today, you will have the knowledge and tools to craft a customized motivational strategy that resonates deeply with your team members. And as a bonus, 
You will also take away that by employing empathy, active listening, and keen observation of nonverbal cues, you can create a culture of open communication and genuine responsiveness. Now, this approach involves implementing personalized incentives, along with recognition that speak directly to each team member's aspirations, their fears. And with all that, that fosters a dynamic and resilient team environment. Why is this so crucial? Because traditional methods generally deployed because of lack of knowing any other way. These traditional methods often focus solely on collective motivation, a one-size-fits-all, if you will. And that often misses the diverse emotional needs within your team. This is a fine point of sales leadership, but one that you need to embrace, learn, and implement yourself. By going beyond standard sales targets, not just focusing on the numbers, but tapping into what truly motivates each individual, you enhance not just performance, but dedication and satisfaction across all members of your team. So let's get after it and get ready to revolutionize your leadership approach, boost team morale, and achieve remarkable outcomes. Let's delve into the science of personalized and transformative sales team motivation to keep them engaged and highly effective. Are you ready to be the leader your team deserves? Well, let's get started. So too often sales managers overlook this crucial aspect that I mentioned. This crucial aspect of leadership of understanding and addressing the emotional needs of their individual team members. Now, while overarching goals like revenue and performance metrics, KPIs, certainly those are important. Those should come secondary and not be overshadowed by the significance of your inspirational skills, your motivation acumen with your team members. Because by tapping into each sales team member's unique motivations, you can unlock unparalleled performance. If they're happy, they're going to perform. If they're motivated, they're going to perform. If they're inspired by you, they're going to want to do whatever it takes to make you happy. They work for you, not the organization. And their outcomes, their results are a direct reflection of your ability to utilize what I'm sharing with you. Recognizing and addressing each individual's emotional drivers, it's not just about creating a positive workspace. It's about tapping into that powerful source of motivation that lives between our ears. And that will drive the team member towards greater success. Makes your job far easier too, my friends. Because if you're not using some of the tactics that I'm going to be sharing with you today and are using the old traditional methods, some of which are okay, they work, these maximize your efforts. Those traditional methods of motivating the team as a whole, that's real easy, that's real efficient, but it neglects the diverse emotional landscapes and personal motivators that exists within your group. Each salesperson, each member of your team has their own aspirations, their own fears and factors that drive their performance. And it's going to be up to you to be able to unearth that. And once you have that, you can develop a customized and highly effective motivational strategy and you're likely to be able to understand that more quickly, more scientifically, if you have a disk profile on them. Now understand, you moving from sales to sales leadership, you had your own motivators. 
Your motivators are not going to be their motivators. What inspired you and got you going is not necessarily and unlikely to motivate others. But many sales managers take that approach and then get frustrated and get a whole level of mediocrity of which they just cannot drive past. This requires what I'm going to share with you today. It requires empathy, active listening, and the ability to interpret those nonverbal cues. It's about reading your folks, being tuned into them, and making sure it's about them always and not about you. It's about creating a culture of open communication and acting on individual feedback, implementing tactics that cater to individual emotional needs. That involves personalized incentives, recognition, and an ongoing support. You need to have a playbook by person on your sales team. You need to know that and be able to adapt your approach to exactly what they need. And if you move past, by going past the standard accountability of just sales targets and the, the general discussion around sales targets and KPIs and really get down to the understanding of what truly motivates your team members individually, and whether it's their career advancement, maybe that's what they want. Maybe it's their skill development. They just want to be better at what they do. Maybe it is just recognition. They just need to be stroked more often. Maybe it's work-life balance. That's what they're trying to achieve. Help them tie what they do into that achievement. Once you align that, you can then start building on and enhancing their performance. And that in turn will contribute to a dynamic and resilient team. You're going to need to learn and accept and embrace that investing in the emotional well-building, investing in the emotional well-building, uh, investing in the emotional well-being of each team member, that unlocks a level of dedication, respect, trust, and performance that solely talking mostly about the collective, the team, those strategies fail to achieve what I'm talking about today. Adaptability is key. It's key to a successful leadership approach. And embrace the fact that every team member is unique, just like you. But again, what worked on you is unlikely to work on everybody. Because we all have our own strengths. We all have our own weaknesses. We all have our own preferences around communication styles. And certainly we have our own motivators. And by adopting a flexible leadership approach, you can tailor your leadership style. You can tailor your leadership style to better suit each and every team member's needs, and they do need you to do this. So if you're finding traditional leadership approaches falling a little bit short, especially with just certain members of your team, it's time to consider a change and adopt a more flexible leadership approach. It's key to the success of your team. Every team member is unique. And of course, this is going to increase engagement and an engaged team is a more productive team. It's going to increase motivation and it's going to increase loyalty. Who loves hiring replacement salespeople? Wouldn't you rather not have that on your to-do list? This drives a lot of loyalty because, again, they work for you. They stay with you. They trust you. They respect you. Not necessarily the company. You're just the face of the company, but you're the individual. You're the human they work for. 
Now, I've often seen this so often. I've often seen this applied in a way that just makes me cringe. And that's the traditional leadership. That's the traditional leadership approach of being a hard ass and taking a strict top-down command and control approach. That may look good in the movies. And there may be very rare occasions that you'll need to be a little harder on folks, you know, on your team. But let me tell you, if that is your standard approach, it's only going to lead to negative results, average performance, turnover, and a lot of extra drama for you. Instead, yes, you need to be firm. This isn't about coddling people. In fact, I discourage you from coddling poor performance. That performance needs to be addressed and coached and improved. That poor performance brings down other team members, so you must avoid that. But you can't be a hard ass all the time, so you need to be able to develop the ability and practice selective overlooking. There's going to be times you need to call it out, and there's going to be times you need to just let it go. And that's a whole nother discussion. But understand that your approach, your knowledge, skills, and tools of leadership, particularly with the most difficult team in any organization, which is the sales team, your approach is going to have a significant impact on employee attitude, performance, results, longevity. It's all tied to you. In fact, 90% of employees' success is attributed to their attitude. By adopting a, a flexible leadership approach that's tailored to each person and you're not being a hard ass all the time, you can influence your team members' attitudes and create a positive workplace culture that everybody will want to work for. And remember, as you've previously learned, communication is key to any leadership role. It's not just what you say, but how you say it. And I'll say this all the time. Remember, you're being followed by a documentary film crew. They're capturing everything you say, every nuance of your body language, your voice inflection. And that's all being judged and processed by your team members. It's not what you say, it's how you make them feel. And you have to watch being snippy and snarky and being condescending. That may be funny to you. You may be in the mood for it. But rarely is that going to work with your team members. What we're going to continue to talk about today is going to lead to a better communication and trust within your team. And that's crucial. Absolutely crucial for achieving a positive team dynamic. And the more positive your team dynamic is, the more positive your outcomes are going to be. And another essential component of effective leadership is building and maintaining an emotional bank account. You knew that was coming, didn't you? You have to have a strong balance with your team members' emotional bank accounts. And you're going to need to keep a close tab on that balance with each individual. You need to understand that. And if you're not familiar with the emotional bank account, the process involves investing time in building relationships with your team members, showing general interest in their lives, being supportive and understanding when personal issues arise, being constructive in your feedback, being positive in your recognition, catch them doing it right, manage by walking around. Don't just be a hard ass, which is a withdrawal. You want to be constantly making deposits because you are going to have to make a withdrawal. I mentioned coddling people and underperformance previously. You can't allow poor performance. But there's going to be times that your 
sales team members slip. Everybody has a bad week or two or month. And if you've made enough deposits, you've shown that you're literally on their side, that you literally have their back because you've emotion, you, you've made this emotion deposit over and over and over again. When it comes time to give them coaching, give them redirection, give them a little more pressure, you've got plenty in the bank account to make these withdrawals. You want to make sure you have a higher balance than what you're going to withdraw. And if you keep that as a visual, as a barometer to how you're communicating and recognizing your team, you'll always be ahead. A flexible leadership approach can improve your leadership skills and boost employee engagement and their performance, which are absolute keys to success. Now, in order to determine the best way to motivate each sales team member, you need to sit down and you need to have an individual heart-to-heart person to person, human to human interview. Get to know them. But be looking during this interview and listening for what is driving this person to be successful. What do they want? It's just like discovery questions that you're asking a prospective client or customer. Find out what they need, then provide them the solution. It's a closed sale every time. You need to understand your team member's strengths, their weaknesses, and most importantly, their personal goals. What are their challenges? What are their needs? What's their future want to be? And when you use personality assessments like DISC, and you can have these career development discussions to help them understand that you're having this discussion to help them not to get something off your chest, not to chew their ass out, you're going to be good, but you're going to uncover what their needs are. That's what their goals are. That's important. Secondly, you want to make sure you're having regular one-on-one -on -one meetings. And when I say regular, that's all relative. But I generally encourage no less than weekly. There's some situations that it's more frequent but a weekly check-in and feeding those motivators at each of those opportunities. Every seven days, you need to have made a significant deposit in that bank account, if not every day. I know what drives them, give it to them. And make sure it's open dialogue, that you're asking open-ended questions. Who, what, where, when, how, when. Make it an 80-20. They're sharing with you 80% of the information, you're talking only 20% of the time. That's real dialogue. That's showing your empathy. That you really care about their opinions, their thoughts, their experiences. And so during this interview, you might want to ask questions like, what are your long-term career goals? What aspects of your work do you find most fulfilling? What challenges are you facing and how can I support you? Now, some of the individual motivators may be financial rewards, opportunities for career advancement. Often it's recognition and praise that's much more valuable than money to many people. It always was to me. A sense of purpose and alignment that they're contributing. They're a big deal. They're meaningful to your organization. They may be someone who's really into work-life balance. They want to go coach the teams. They want to be at the events. So being flexible. And almost everybody enjoys a supportive and collaborative team environment where they're all contributing to each other's success. So that means you need to tailor your motivational approaches based on their preferences. If career growth is their motivation, provide training, mentorship, promotion opportunities. Put them on the track to management or supervision or training. Let them be your sales trainer. And always make sure you recognize and celebrate achievements publicly. We always praise in public and correct in private. 
never any negative feedback in public in front of anybody else. Watch your tones, but make sure you're recognizing folks in public. And it's really important that you set clear, achievable goals. So often I come across companies, leaders that think that they need to keep raising the goals or people are just going to get lazy. Or that by raising the goal, that's what everybody's going to go after to achieve. Is if I just raise the goal, that's the motivation they need. And you're so freaking wrong, I can't tell you. After 40 plus years of leading salespeople, sales teams, sales leaders, I found that if the goal is unachievable, you're dead at the starting gate. They'll just throw up their hands and the motivation is gone from the beginning. Conversely, success breeds success. And if they're constantly hitting their goals and blowing past their goals, that gives them confidence. That gives them swagger. It needs to be achievable. And that helps them stay aligned with the company's goals. So don't just raise goals to think that it's going to inspire anybody to go blowing past something. Or... You can raise those goals, but you better give them a way to get there. It needs to be a new product, a new service, a new acquisition. That makes sense. But they should always have a say in their goals. That needs to be a discussion monthly. And another thing about salespeople, they need to always keep in mind, and you need to encourage them to Understand they're a business owner, so they need some autonomy, but mostly they need ownership. And that ownership may include your willingness to empower them, empower them to take ownership of their results, their actions, their decision making. Don't be a micromanager. Buy that autonomy and trust that we all need that drives success and respect. And certainly you want to be able to give regular feedback, positive and coaching, some developmental feedback, but it has to be encouraging and coaching, but in a way that's tailored to their unique needs. Always play up their strengths, always play up the positive part, how much you respect them, you trust them, you believe in them. And then you can provide some guidance. But they need to be on board with you, that they need the guidance, professional development. It'd be great if you have somebody that's raising their hand, I want to get to the next level. I want your job. Please take my job. Because if I got a group of people that are striving and performing to take place my, my place in the company, I'm going to get ahead in the company. They're never a threat. Please don't fall for that myth. So invest in their professional development. Offer training, offer workshops, coach them. Give them an hour a week on leadership coaching. That will align with their career aspirations. And another key part of this is promoting collaboration. You know, during sales meetings, during even one or two or three person engagements. Make it an open, collaborative environment where team members get to jump in, offer opinions and thoughts and experiences, suggestions to each other. It is amazing how they learn so much more from each other than they ever will from you. They have a different way of listening to their peers, especially the ones that they respect. That is where a lot of their success is going to come from. That's where they're way more accepting of ideas, new approaches, trying new things than they will take from you. Even if you were a great salesperson, they'd rather hear it from their peers because they're the one that's doing it every day. So encourage peer mentorship. Encourage sharing of knowledge. It's 
sales meetings. It goes something like this. Melissa, you had a great month last month. Wow, thank you so much, Melissa. What are some of the things you did to hit that number? What did you do? When did you do it? How did you do it? Why was that important to you? How have you done that differently in the past? What did you learn from that? Get Melissa talking about her achievements. Those are her best practices. Those are her vital behaviors. And believe me, everybody wants Melissa's success. They're going to pick up, they're going to listen to some of those best practices and vital behaviors that Melissa shares and her description based on the questions you ask. Recognition and appreciation is super important. You are certainly fanning Melissa's ego, self-esteem, confidence by asking her opinion and then getting the interest from everybody else in the team. That's very motivational. Because almost all of us seek some kind of recognition and appreciation for their efforts. And that's one way to do it. And then you know, also you need to have awards, public acknowledgement, and especially in an environment where they can receive praise from their peers or other people in the organization. That's a whole nother day we need to talk. But it's also very important around the purpose and mission. Aligning their work, their achievements to how it's influencing the company's mission, how their behaviors are supporting the company's values, how they're such a great role model of achievement that's driving the overall success of the organization, that can be a very powerful motivator. And in today's society, this sense of purpose has a huge positive impact on how hard they work and what they achieve. Some people are very competitive. And this competitive drive, this competitive spirit can drive some team members to excel and surpass their peers. Competition is always a great way to motivate your sales team. Making sure that you've got sales results posted in a very visual way. With the, If you're in an office, if it's remote, you need to have a portal somewhere where everybody can see how everybody else is doing in all the numbers. And back in the day, we had a big board back in a copy room in each of our car locations. The first place, great salespeople, good, high-performing, competitive salespeople went to is that room to see where they stood against everybody else. And if they were a little behind somebody they wanted to beat, they picked up their game. But if that was not visual to them, that motivator would have never been in the game. So make sure you've got public acknowledgement, results being publicly shown. It's funny, I, I don't get it. Uh, I hear it often how some companies or some leaders, sales leaders are reticent about publishing these numbers, putting them out there, like they're going to offend somebody. You may offend somebody, but you're going to offend the other performers and you may offend them in a way that's going to benefit you don't be afraid of doing that because you want to drive intrinsic satisfaction intrinsic motivation comes from a genuine passion for their work their achievements the process achieving their goals that drives success back to goal setting make sure they're hitting their goals make their goals achievable Sales managers must recognize and respect all these individual motivators and then making sure that they tailor those motivational strategies according to the team members to maximize their potential for success. They're all unique. They're all different. And they're not yours. Please keep that in mind. Big mistake. So let's start wrapping this up. By consistently applying these best practices I've talked about today, this mindset that I shared with you, 
sales leaders, sales managers can better understand their team members' unique attributes and needs. And this understanding can lead to improved team dynamics. It can increase motivation. It's going to enhance individual performance, which ultimately contributes to the overall success of the sales team. And remember, nobody gets paid until a sales get made. You're the most important leader in the organization. So you want to make sure you're scheduling one-on-one -on -one meetings, getting to know them, building relationships with them. You want to be able to listen actively without interrupting during these engagements. Ask a lot of questions. Listen to their opinions. If they have complaints, please, you want them complaining to you, not to each other. That's a downer for everybody. Bring their complaints to me, but then you've got to do something about it. And making sure you're always paying attention to those nonverbal cues, body language, facial expressions, tonality. If you have access to personality assessments. I'm a huge fan of DISC. Marsh Briggs is another one. Utilize those. That gives you a, a quick, easy, scientific understanding of what their motivators are going to be, how they enjoy being communicated with. So if you have the access to and you can encourage your team members to complete them, it's going to give you a big leg up. But make sure you personally know these traits from these assessments. And it's really good to, to share those assessments with everybody. Discuss them with the group. Make it part of your vocabulary. Have individual reviews. I like the, a quick weekly recap. Certainly once a month, you want to have a, a coaching session, a review session, a goal setting session. And goals aren't just the numbers. Goals are the behaviors they're working on. What are you going to do to improve this? Not you need to improve this. What are you going to do? What are you going to change? What are you going to do more? What are you going to do to make sure you maintain these results? What's working for you? And getting them to verbally acknowledge that, talk about that. That way, when things are starting to slip, they know what behavior to go back to, what how to alter their course. Behaviors create the outcomes. Behaviors create the results. And whether they're good results or underperforming results, it's their behavior. So don't focus on the numbers during these individual interviews. Focus on the behaviors. And this is all around using open-ended questions. Who, what, where, when, how, why. Get them talking. Talk and then you listen. But regular feedback is crucial to keeping them motivated. Another thing you might want to think about either for yourself or team members is emotional intelligence training. Invest in training programs or workshops that will enhance their behaviors, their knowledge of how humans think and their, where their emotions come from, how they make decisions how to communicate in a way that's going to raise the level of trust and respect that not only their team members, but certainly their clients and their prospective clients. When you have that knowledge of EQ, that's huge to your sales results. And once they, you can start providing this emotional intelligence training to your sales team members or yourself, you can apply those principles to enhance and encourage your team to be the best they can be. And recognition, acknowledgement, please make it tangible wherever you can. Yes, a pat on the back once a week is great. A clap during a, a sales meeting, awesome but you also need something tangible that they can touch, see, display, a trophy, a plaque, an award, something other than just words. 
and make sure it can be displayed publicly so that the whole team sees it, the whole company sees it. I'm simply shocked at how many sales managers overlook this rocket fuel approach. So make it tangible, make it an award, make it something they, they're going to be proud of having. And show appreciation by recognizing the unique contributions of each team member. And then making sure that you're having some private sessions with them to recognize their achievements. They need to hear it from you privately too. It has to be genuine, as I've mentioned many times before. You have to be absolutely transparent. And you have to have a flexible leadership approach. You need to adapt your leadership style to align with the needs of that individual. Not what motivates you. It's what's going to motivate them. It's not one size fits all. Don't be a hard ass. That may impress your boss. That may be Wolf of Wall Street, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Those are movies, folks. They're not training videos. So sometimes your boss wants you to go out there and kick their ass to get them going. You need to filter that and then turn that into a more motivational approach to get them to make whatever change in direction or success that's going to impress your boss. But being a hard ass may make them feel like, boy, you're all over it. But it's not going to impress your team. It's your team that's going to make you successful. Being too much of a hard ass is only going to drive your team members away. You cannot be moody. You cannot be snarky. You cannot be condescending. You can't be unpredictable. And yes, you're going to need to be firm at times, but fair all the time. And please remember developing the art of selective overlooking. Keeping in mind always that they perform based on your leadership and their buy-in to support you. And you are only as good as their attitude, 90% of their success. And that's my stat. That's not provable anywhere. That's my stat. 90% of stats are made up. I'm, and this is just how I feel. But 90% of their success comes from between their ears. It's hard to argue. And it's not what you say, but how you say it. Keep it in mind, the emotional bank account. Keep close tabs on your balances. If you need to go put some money in the bank, go out there and make sure you find a way to do that. And they're going to appreciate you a lot. They're going to be motivated by you a lot if you tailor guidance and support and coaching based on what they need. Help them out. Maybe you need to pitch in and get a deal closed from time to time. Maybe you need to throw them a new opportunity from time to time. Give to them, they'll give back to you. Give more than you can take. Making sure you're having your regular check-ins. Polish up your coaching skills. Provide sales training making sure you're tying everything back to behaviors, not the numbers. Have them involved in the goal setting session each month. Get their buy-in with that. Make sure it's achievable. And making sure that during these monthly meetings to set goals and discuss the previous month, that you reinforce your understanding of their emotional needs and motivations.